Can we draw anything in geometry nodes? Well, beside lights, yes we can. See, in this video, I will show you two ways to draw objects in geometry nodes. Both are easy and useful to learn. So let's see what we have. Starting with a new scene, and I'm on Blender 4.01, but this also works with Blender 3 and above. We need now two things. One is an object, and the monkey head can do the trick. You can hide it once you add it. We do also need a curve. Once you add those two, switch to Geo nodes from up top. And let's close the Infos window on the left because no one needs that. Then hit the new button. I will start by adding a curve to point node, then drop it on the line between the group input and output. This curve to point node will generate hollow points on the curve path. And it has three types that you can switch between. Usually the length type works the best, so I will switch to it. Then we can control the length value in the node. After that, we need an instance on point node. With this, we can change the point generated by the first node into any object we need. So I will drag the monkey head from the layers area to the geo nodes and connect it to the instance input. Let's also stretch the curve in edit mode just to make it more clear. And that's the basic of it. This first method is more on the scattering side, so we draw objects, might be helpful in bushes or stones or fun things like fire and water stuff. And while in edit mode, you can pick the draw tool and use it to draw any shape or path you want to have. Two things to control here, rotation and scale, and we do that with one node, the random value. Add it from the search bar and use it on vector type for the rotation value. We don't usually need a rotation on X and Y, so make them on zero value. And with the Z, we can control the random rotation on those monkey heads. We can also control the scale for the instances, this time with the float random value, and connect it to the scale. It has a mini and max values, so you can control the scaling range from there. We can also send some of the main values to the geometry node modifier side. We do that by connecting any value or slot we want to the group input. The same thing goes for collections, so if we have a group of objects, we can bring them as a collection, then connect that to the instance input. With collections, you need to check both separate children and pick instance options for it to work as it should. And here is a full view of the complex set of nodes we used. Two are main, five in total, 10 seconds to make.
Next type in geometry nodes drawing is the hard one. With this, once you add a new geometry node to the curve, we need a curve to mesh node. In the profile curve input, we will add a curve line node. It might look missed up at first. You just need to fix the axes on the end values, then scale the curve in edit mode. We can also use the start value to extend the surface. Now this method rely on materials and UVs, so I will bring a flooring material. Then in the geo nodes, let's add a set material node to assign the one we have. Nothing will show up since we don't have UV, so we need one, and for that we need to connect the geo node to the material using a store named attribute node. Once you add it, put the attribute type on vector, then make the domain on face corner. We also need to set a name for this attribute, which we will use later in the material shading, so add any name but don't name it UV. In the value slot, we need to add a UV unwrap node. Let's head to the material shading. I will look for the color texture. Then add to it a coordinate and mapping nodes with Control T. This shortcut is with the Node Wrangler add on, which should be enabled in your side. And let me connect the mapping to the other texture in the color mix. The thing we need to do here is easy delete the texture coordinate and replace it with an attribute node vector to vector. Then name the attribute the same thing we had in the Geo node. And now we can see the material on the curve. Let me hide this cube on the side and back to geometry nodes. We can now draw flooring with texture. Now, before you run to your grandma happy with what you have, there's one problem. The scaling is missed up each time we draw. I tried many things, then found the solution on the default cube channel. So shout out to the man. To fix this, we need a vector math node set on scale. This will go right after the UV unwrap node. We do also need a face area and an accumulate field nodes connected to the scale of the vector math and make sure to set the field node to face type. The texture now too small to be seen, so either fix it from the mapping node in the shading or add another vector scale before the one we added. Both works the same. That's it. Subscribe if you're still here and thumbs up for your fellow rangers to see this. So, until next time, stay sharp. Goodbye.